Hi everyone, my name is Massimo. I am technical trainer and uh, I am one of the experts um, uh, of the learning room, MTT infrastructure and learning room. Today I want to show you something. I want to uh, talk about uh, role-based access control. What is the role-based access control? Is the way you can provide access to the resources for a user, for an application. So it's something uh, in my opinion, more important for, for the security. So role-based access control is based on three topic, important topic, the identity, identity allow you to describe, to define, to set the, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the user, the user or the group or the service principal or the managed entity. You want to uh, give to access uh, to resources or uh, to, to to an environment. So user and group are used for uh, the human being, while service principal and or managed entity are used for uh, for 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 application. So uh, this is the one of the three point. The second one is the role. Role is the what you want to allow or deny for, for, for an identity. A role basic, basically is a JSON. A JSON that describe, JSON is composed by, this JSON is composed by, uh, yeah, a, a section of metadata, the title, description, and yeah, the category of this role. Another part uh, in which you can set the action uh, you uh, allow uh, for the for the rule uh, or the action you deny in particular you have uh, uh, two section about uh, action not action these two sections are related to the control plane The control pane in Azure is a, a set, the set of operations you can use to manage resources. So if you want to create a virtual machine, the operation that allow you to create a virtual machine is a control plane operation. In the same, uh, with the same uh, approach, you have other two section, data action and not data action. This is these are uh, two sections, the sections uh, related to the data plane. So in uh, for the resources that allow you to manage data, for example, the storage account, uh, you have a set of operations that allow you to uh, do uh, access or to save data, okay? The not section of both action and data action allow you to uh, deny operation for a control pane, okay? You have uh, a lot of bill in roles. And basically these roles are, are of three types. You have uh, the owner, you have the contributor, and also the reader. The owner can do everything, can do. So keep attention when you give this role to someone, for example. The contributor cannot elevate credential. or in general, manage credential. So uh, a contributor can do everything, can create, for example, a virtual machine, can create a network, can change something in the resource group, but cannot uh, uh, give access to another user or uh, elevate its own credential. Then finally, a reader is uh, just read properties. 
So can can see uh, a resource group, uh, can see the list of the resources inside the resource group, uh, can enter in a virtual machine resource and just read the properties of, uh, of the virtual machine. Also, you can have specific uh, resource role, for example, role, virtual, machine, contributor, a virtual machine contributor can change everything, can create virtual machine, can destroy virtual machine, but cannot, for example, create a virtual network uh, because it's just a contributor for the virtual machine, okay? The idea is uh, you need to give the right role. The right role is the role that allow the minimal number of operation to a user to uh, do uh, the daily job. If you don't have a, a, a built-in role, you can create a custom role. You can start from scratch, from a JSON, an empty JSON, and you can add whatever you want, or you can, uh, uh, Take, uh, for example, a virtual machine contributor, JSON role, the JSON file for the role, that the kind of role, and uh, change and modify this JSON, and then create your own custom role. Finally, you have the scope. Scope is uh, the where you give a particular role for an identity, and the scope must be a management. Group can be a subscription, can be a resource group, or a resource. So, for example, you can give uh, yeah the role of contributor to Massimo uh, in a resource group or. Uh, um, and yes, I don't know, uh, a contributor role to, to Massimo on a specific virtual network resource. So exactly the same. I want to show you in a portal what's happened. So I open the portal and uh, uh, this is uh, our uh, scope, our uh, environment. Imagine we, uh, we hire a new um, engine, a network engineer, Jane, and we want to give that to give uh, her the access to this scope, to this uh, environment, but but just uh, only to create uh, uh, network stuff. Okay, we don't want that uh, Jane can create a virtual machine, but we want that Jane can manage a network, uh, firewall, uh, and so on. So uh, the first thing we can do is go to the access control. Access control is the uh, is the blade you can use to manage the role based access control for a scope. In this case, the scope is the learning room. We add a new role assignment and we start from the, so we set the scope, this resource group. Now we choose the role. In particular, we want to We have a network contributor. Let's you manage networks. It's okay. But if you want to understand better uh, what are the operations you can uh, do with this role, you can go to the view here and you have the list of the actions. In this list, you have uh, 932 permissions. But for example, if you look for firewall, you can see that you have. Uh, the capability to, to read information of a firewall, but you can uh, create a firewall or you can delete the firewall, okay? If I look for machine, for virtual machine, okay, you only can manage something related to the network for a virtual machine, but not for virtual machine. So you cannot create here a virtual machine. It's the right, uh, the right uh, uh, role. Just to see the JSON, if you go to JSON here, you can have, uh, yeah, the, the JSON. This is the metadata part, the name and the description. And this is the permission section 
in the permission section, you can see one, two, three, and four sections, exactly the actions and not actions, data actions and not data actions. Uh, just, uh, just a thing uh, to notice here, you can have uh, something related to, some, you can use a wildcard. Here you say, I want to allow to this role all the operation under the Microsoft .network uh, uh, namespace for the operation itself. So uh, in this way, all the operation named Microsoft .network slash something are allowed, but you can uh, set a specific operation. In this case, this operation here, microsoft.resource slash subscription resource groups read means uh, I want that uh, this role can read the information about the resource group, but the read operation, just specific. Uh, the question may be, hey Massimo, but uh, how I can know all the possible operations I have in Azure? There is a, a page here, this one, if you look at Azure Resource Provider Operation, you have the list, the complete list of all the operation for the yeah for the uh, Azure services. In our case, in our scenario, we have the networking, and uh, I have all the operation for the CDM, for example. Or if I scroll down, uh, can I have? Let me check. Go down, go down. Uh, the Microsoft .network, uh, yeah, uh, namespace, and here you can find something related. Uh, application gateways, for example, this is the operation to read information about an application gateway, or the capability to write, to create an application gateway, or a delete. So you can set the specific operation, a group of operation, I don't know, Microsoft .network application gateways slash uh, wildcard means you can manage the, the application gateway and so on. Okay, so it's, it's not easy, but it's not completely difficult. It's not difficult to create your own your own uh, role. In this case, uh, for us, it's okay. So let me go next and select the uh, the user. The user is uh, in our scenario, Jane. Perfect. So. Uh, I can add the description to remember why I had this uh, this uh, this operation, uh, this uh, this assignment, but it's okay. Now we have assigned the role to Jane, so it means then that, uh, that the next time Jane access to the portal, Jane can see the resource group because uh, because uh, in this role uh, we have the read operation on the resource group. And Jane can manage the, the the network stuff, but not other, for example, a storage account or a, or a network. In the same uh, uh, portal page you used to assign, you can have the list of the assignment. And here is the list of assignment. For example, my account here is a, a, the owner, is the owner of the subscription, and it is the owner of the tenant, and also is the owner of this resource group, and you can see uh, this uh, um, yeah, role right here is assigned to this scope because uh, I assign this role management group. So also you can have the scope, uh, you can understand what is the hierarchy of the assignment. So this resource means uh, the role was assigned to this particular scope and so on. Subscription means uh, this assignment was assigned in the subscription and so on. So just to check if the assign is the right one, we open the portal in a private navigation and we enter using the jane.2 at let me remember the password, it's not easy an old man, so sometimes I don't remember the password, as I said to you. But now I need to approve uh, using the multi-factor authenticator. Let's go. And then, okay, now we are Jane, 
perfect. We can go inside the resource group. We can, for example, create a virtual network. Go to the virtual network here and create a virtual network. Just give the name. I want to prove to create uh, my v net. net. It's okay. It's not important, the, the other properties. I just want to show you that I can create a virtual network. That's okay, create. And probably after a few seconds, I will have my network. It means uh, Jane can create a virtual network. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, it is exactly was, uh, what I expected because I, I give the role virtual network contributor. Wait for the deployment. And three, two, one, perfect. We have the we have the virtual network. Now we want to try that if we try to create another resource, for example, a storage. A storage account is not something related to the network, so it's not in the, the operation to create a storage account, it's not in the set uh, microsoft.network slash something. Okay. We give access to the in the role, so give a name, MTT the storage 01. I don't know. Go to review part, and probably we have an error. What is the error? If we look on the error, we can see that this is an authorization failed error. So we don't have permission to create a storage. It, it is right. It is right because uh, we don't want that uh, Jane can create a storage account. So we prove that the, the role is okay. Role based access assignment uh, is working. Uh, that's all. So just to close this video, I want to remember you that uh, yeah, the role based access control assignment is the role based access control is an additive model. What this mean? If we have a subscription and we have uh, a couple of resource group here, RG1, for example, and RG2 here, and we set uh, for Jane a contributor at subscription level. OK, and they, then we set Jane as reader to a resource group one. Jane is not reader on resource group one. Jane is a contributor. Just because uh, when you add uh, a, resource, uh, a, a role based access control, a role to a resource group, uh, and this resource group is uh, uh, yeah, a, a leaf of uh, a, a hierarchy. In this case, uh, the resource group is under sub, sub one, in, under the subscription. The reader role add its own operation to the contributor, and in particular, the operation of the reader, it's already in the contributor. So for this reason, uh, Jane is not a reader on RG1, but uh, she's a contributor. So uh, keep attention when you add role uh, in a hierarchy because uh, yeah, role uh, based access control is an additive model. So thank you for the attention and uh, see you next and continue to follow the MTT uh, Learner Room. See you later. Bye bye.